I got soul. Hey, if I didn't, I wouldn't be in here. <laughs> Hello there, a very warm welcome to another of our exclusive Ringside Specials. Big boxing names, past and present, continue to visit us here at Sky Studios. They certainly do, like multi-weight world champions Marco Antonio Barrera and the legendary Sugar Ray Leonard's been in. Now time for one of the greatest ever heavyweight champions, the long-reigning world king whose incredible career in boxing spanned five decades. Larry Holmes is with us. What an honour, Johnny, this is. Uh, Pleasure to have you here with us, Larry. John, hey, man, listen, I'm glad that you guys asked me to be here. I'm very, very happy. What are you actually doing in London? We're going to do some parties, that's all, and just run around and meet people, watch the box to see if they're doing the right thing. So I can tell them, hey, that's wrong. I like to tell them what's wrong so I can show them what's right, you know what I mean? No, that's one of the things that I'm doing. I'm having fun doing it. Before we get into history, why did you never box here? Well, you know, I was with a guy by the name of Don King. <laughs> I think of him. And uh, he didn't bring me over here. Boy, we came over here a lot to visit. And when I did fight, I went to, we stopped here. Then we went to the Philippines, over Manila, and we went to Malaysia and all along other places, went to Africa, but never stopped here to fight. Was never. there anybody in England that you, you fancied Well, I wanted to fight Joe Bugner at one point. Yeah. I wanted to fight him. I fought a guy named Lucian Rodriguez, I think he's from here. So I was thinking he was from here. But uh, that's it. But we fought him in the States, in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, let's, let's, go, <clears> let's talk about you now. Let's go back to the, the very beginning. Uh, in your career, you know, people thought you were probably an angry man or a defiant man. But, but, but I, would that have spawned from the very, very beginning as a young well, man? Well, you know, I was kind of angry, and, and I admit that I were, because nobody really paid any attention to me. They said my legs were too small. I couldn't punch. I was just a copy of Muhammad Ali. Just because I idolized the guy. The guy... Um, <clears throat> box, hit, jab, move around, and, and look good, and uh, tap pretty well. I idolized that. I liked that. I liked his style. And uh, just because I copied some of it, I wasn't saying I was pretty or nothing, but I copied some of the styles, his jabs, his move, and whatnot, and I bettered it. What was your childhood like, and, and what got you into boxing in the first place? That, my childhood. Coming from the ghetto, not having anything, you know, my mom and welfare, surf plus. We had nothing, you know. Uh, I dropped out of school in the seventh grade, and um, what else I gonna do? I was always athletic inclined, and the only thing I can do because I didn't have the schooling was the, the box. We didn't need to go to college and have the full education to put on a pair of boxing gloves, <clears throat> excuse me, and box. So that's what I chose, and I got to be pretty good at it, and I stuck with it. And I, a lot of people came to me and said, "Hey, you know, they motivated me. They really motivated me." They motivated me by telling me that I couldn't be a champion. They told me I couldn't do it. And I wanted to prove them wrong, that I can be the heavyweight champion in the world. I said, I'm going to beat Muhammad Ali. I can beat him. They said, no, you can't beat him. I can beat Ernest Shaver. You can't beat Ernest Shaver. I can beat Kenny Norton. No, you can't beat Kenny Norton. You mm. can't beat nobody. I said, okay, watch. You didn't have much of a, an amateur career just to, no. to set you up for the pros, did you? No, I had 22 amateur fights. I lost two. Um, to Nick Wells and one to a guy by the name of Dwayne Bobbitt that got beat by mm -hmm. Philip St Stevenson from Cuba. And, uh, that was in the Olympic trials, That was it? in the Olympic trials. And the reason why I couldn't beat Nick Wells, because it was a softball. I mean, he was coming at me like this, and I wasn't used to that because <laughs> I was the beginning. And he, when he threw that punch, it was bang, and it hit me up top of the head, and I went down, hit me again, I went down, and he was going to hit me again. I said, no more, I quit, I quit. I know I couldn't handle it, so I just quit. That, that, that <clears throat> probably affected probably your reputation as a professional yeah. as you first started right. out. They, yeah. they said you were a quitter. I didn't have the heart. Did that bother you? Bother me. And I had to prove myself and convince them that I had the heart. But nobody really cared what I said because of what they seen mm -hmm. and what they thought. I had to continue to prove it. Even today, I don't really get the recognition that I usually well, would normally get, like a Mike Tyson. Hey, listen, I had 20 title defenses. He had, my Tyson had three or four, and they lost. I was champion for seven and a half years. He was champion for seven months. I mean, and they don't want to recognize me. Ali don't know how to, the, uh, the fights that I had defending the title. He didn't hold his title for seven and a half years. There's only one guy who had that title for seven and a half years or longer, was Joe Lewis. He's the only one that, person that had a record like mine was Rocky Marciano, straight right, uh, victories. Nobody else. And why can't I fit right in that box? Why do Muhammad Ali got to be the greatest? He can say he can, he's the greatest. You can say he's the greatest. But I know the difference. 
I'm the greatest. <laughs> Larry, you seem in a really happy place these days. But, but does that still hurt you? Does that still annoy you that no. maybe the credit wasn't given no, to you I, enough at the time? But, no, because you've given it to me now. you got me on your show. I mean, this, that's, this is the credit that I, the people that like boxing, know boxing. They give me my respect. That's all I want. I don't care. They can say I couldn't beat this guy, that guy. I wasn't a great. I don't care. As long as you guys are satisfied with me and the people that like me like me, I'm happy. And maybe the appreciation yeah. is coming later as we look back and realize what a career you had and, and, and how successful you were. Because in this day and age, yeah. Johnny, it just doesn't happen. Hey, you know, it, it doesn't happen, but you were appreciated over here. Please, don't. don't yeah, oh, don't. I, know, I know that. I can tell. You know, one of the things, I don't really care if they, uh, people don't really give me my just dues like I normally or think I would get because it's good when I don't get it all because, you know, I won't be able to go nowhere without <laughs> messing with you. Larry, can I have your autograph? We know exactly how good you are. We don't have to look at the paperwork. Right. Mm -hmm. Take us back, though. In those early days, obviously, sparring was, was hugely important and the time you spent with, with Muhammad Ali. Was, was that the, the beginning of your greatness, do you think? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I, you know, I told a lot of people this story and I will continue to tell it probably until the day I die. Muhammad Ali made me feel good. He made me happy. He, first day I met Muhammad, we went to the camp. He said, I want to box, I'm putting on an exhibition. I said, yeah, okay, fine, I'd be glad to do it with him. I didn't never box him. He gave me a black eye. Ali gave me a black eye. I wouldn't let him put no ice on it either. Man, let's put the ice on that eye. I said, I want to show this, ice, this eye off so don't put no ice on my eye because people ain't gonna believe what I tell Muhammad Ali hit me in my eye, give me a black eye. You're so proud but of it. I was proud of my eye, man. I want to show that eye off, and I did. I showed it off. You were kind of his sparring partner from the second you turned mm -hmm. turned professional for what, four, five, five, four years. six years? Four years. It's gotta I be was the best. Main, I was man. main. I was his main sparring partner, and I was his friend. Because one of the things I didn't try to do as a sparring partner, and, and Ali wanted you to do it all the time, try to get him and hurt him. But I don't want to hurt nobody. I'm not going to hurt the guy who's paying my rent every month. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to hit. I'm going to hit him and whatnot, and stay out there and not take the punches myself. And I'm going to do what I have to do to get him in condition. Who was advising you of this at the time? Because most guys, when they go into spa, they think, you know what, you're not getting the top side of me. But for you to have the instincts to say, I'll, I'll hold back a little bit, otherwise I'm going to get the side. Well, you know, I don't know. But it happened. I don't know what made me do this. I, I, but I was not trying to prove myself to anybody. I was just trying to continue to do what I had to do to help Muhammad Ali beat Joe Frazier over there and beat George Foreman and Kenny Norton. That's what, because those guys... Uh, was, Ali was helping me when he was fighting on guys, so why well, hurt him? I remember seeing old black and white footage of you two sparring, mm -hmm. and you were, you were getting the top side of him in sparring. You're mm -hmm. telling me you're holding back, mm -hmm. and so when the fight was announced that you were fighting each other, I just to me it wasn't even. Well, that, that's what I was telling him, but I'm glad that he didn't think too hard of what I was saying. That you can't beat me. I'm glad he was thinking that he could because if he if I'd have fought him. And he's thinking that I, I'm going to beat him, and he got it in his mind, I would have never got to fight. And that would have been three and a half million dollars out of loss. So I'm <laughs> glad he said, well, I'm going to get Larry Holmes. I'm going to get him, you know. Because you know, it was a lot of money. Yeah, you know, I was poor. I mean, I mean, I didn't have no money. I mean, I had a little money after I won the title, but I didn't really have money. So you say you sort of clipped the wings and went off on your own, and yeah. you said to Ali, that was it. Did, did yeah. you feel like a bit of a lone ranger, that it was, it was you against the world then? No, I, I, you know what, it was not really, but people was saying that I wasn't going to do anything. Matter of fact, people, I made a lot of enemies <laughs> when I beat Ali. A lady outside the arena says, hey, how you doing? I said, fine. And another lady said, I hate you. I said, why you hate me? You beat Muhammad Ali. I said, well, lady, I'm sorry. I said, but it was him or me, and I'm glad it was him. <laughs> you were in the no-win situation, though, because no if, you, if you didn't take the fight, what would happen? They said my legs were too small. I told you he couldn't fight. I would never got the credibility that I got. But there were times in the fight where you were trying to call the referee in. Yeah. I, I was not a mercenary. I never wanted to be a mercenary. I never tried to hurt anybody in the game. But I wanted to do it well enough so they could stop it so I could continue to go on my way. Yeah, how, but, tough, how tough was that, sort of mentally through the fight, when you knew that you were so far ahead of him and it, it was your old friend? And... I said to him, why take it? And he said some things to me I don't think I should say on television here. Like, you know what I mean? 
all the names in the world that I wear, you know. I mean, I, he shocked me. He surprised. I never, because all the time that I was with him, I never heard Ali swear and curse like he did with me mm. that day. And I knew it was trying to get, get my goat. So I knew that. But you, but you could see the method behind the madness of him winding all these opponents, yeah. Joe Fraser, Foreman, people like that, even trying it on yourself. Well, see, don't guys with him with him every day. I was with him every day. So you don't guys with him in the press conference, stuff like that, when he's already. He'd be in the back room, compla uh, not complaining, but planning what he's going to say, what he's going to do. He'd be talking to himself. I thought he was crazy one time. In the mirror, talking about, I'm the greatest, I'm the man, I'm the, the, I can do this, I can, be, I can kill this, I can kill, I can murder, rock and <laughs> injure a brick, I make medicine sick. I'm, you know, he'd be talking like that to himself in the mirror. <laughs> I got, to, I got to be crazy. I be wondering what, man, too many fights or what, you know? <laughs> then I seen Howard Cosell do it too, so I said, you know, hey, he must be all right, because Howard used to say how great he was. I mean, he didn't have to fight nobody. He, he was telling, he's talking to himself in the mirror. You got, you got to do that too. I bet you <laughs> no, got every no. night. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> so, so therefore, you were surprised when Ali tried on you. You thought, I, I know thought he was crazy. Because I, I seen him do it. I'm, I'm there with him. I am there. I'm there with him in the dress room before he fight these other guys, before I'm in the camp with him, you know. When he get up in the morning and run, I go run with him. I know him. He be talking to himself while he's running. I'm the greatest. Oh, I'm going to kill him. Oh, I'm pretty. Oh. <laughs> okay, you ready? No, that thing. Oh, you broke the machine? You broke it. <laughs> <laughs> you broke the machine? No. Is that all I got is one? No, you broke the machine. No, no, what I got? One. I didn't even no, broke the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Norton. What was it, 1978? Kenny Norton, June 9th, 1978, and it was the opportunity of a lifetime. Quoted as one of the greatest heavyweight fights in history. That it because <laughs> he didn't like me and I didn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> and that made a good fight. And, you know, he, a matter of fact, he hit me below the belt. And I said, keep the punches up. And I was every name in the book. Shut up. You know, but... Um, I went on, I won it victoriously. They say I won it by one point. I thought I wanted more than by one point. But that one point gave me the title. And that was good enough for me. And I went on and held that title for seven and a half years. I defended it over 20 times. A couple of fights later, three or four fights later, you boxed Ernie Shavers. Were you telling me something mm. about how <laughs> tough this guy was? For the second Ernie, time, that was the uh, one. Yeah, I it? mean, I didn't want to fight Ernie. You know, they had a box off between... When uh, they stripped the titles, and Ernie, Kenny Norton, Jimmy Young, and somebody else had to box off, and I had to box off, and then mm -hmm. we had to meet. And I didn't want to fight Ernie. I was hoping he lost because he was the hardest puncher that I ever fought, and I knew that because I was a sparring partner. And you'd already boxed him before you boxed him in the first place. Right, and he used to hurt me in the, in the gym. I mean, what, with 16, 17, 18 hour gloves on. He used to hurt me. I didn't want to hit, fight Ernie, but. And they told me they were, I was going to fight him. I knew how to fight him, stay away from him. Great times, great era. What, what did you make of Frazier and Foreman? Of course, you, you never fought them, but what did you think of them? Well, I worked with Joe Frazier at the sparring partner. I worked mm. with him for uh, Ali fight and stuff like that. I, I switched sides for a minute. But uh, George Foreman was too big, too big, too strong. Can't fight because his two big hands up like this. <clears throat> it's real slow. You can get out of the way and say, I'm going to hit you now, so you're going to stand there and get hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's how slow he is. You got time to get out of the way. But if he hits you with that, it's all over because he, he crushes you. But one of the things that I was trying to do, get with George for him because there was a lot of money being offered. He wouldn't take the money, but I was saying to George, you can whoop me. Don't worry about it. I'll let you hit me. You know what I mean? Which it was been psych. I wouldn't let him hit me because George has just come like this. Bang! Bang! If you get there, he's gonna hurt you because he hit damn hard, you know? I understand. I never got hit by him. But the guy that I've seen him fight, he killed like yeah. Joe Frazier. He beat Joe Frazier up. Yeah. I mean, he really, mm -hmm. literally, that's probably why Joe Frazier was having that dementia, probably because George Foreman hit him so darn hard. 
I mean, he obliterated bang, the razor, didn't he? Bang, you know? So outside the ring, you, you were fortunate enough to still mix it with these guys and, mm -hmm. and have a friendship, have a... Yeah, I don't have a problem with nobody. I don't care. You beat me up the day, if I got a check, I'm happy. <laughs> was, it, was it the greatest era for heavyweights yes, ever? Yes. You know, listen, Muhammad Ali, Kenny Norton, Ernie Shavers, George Foreman, Larry Holmes, Jerry Corey, Shabalo, I mean, yeah. Joe Bugney. You had fighters from all over the world with good fighters. You know, Ali dominated all those guys because of his boxing skills, side to side, moving around, using the jab. So it wasn't taking the punches. So he dominated them guys. The era would never be again. When you listed them, you, you only mentioned yourself fifth or sixth, I think, in that, in that list. Well, I knew who was the number one, but I'm trying to make you guys feel good by saying that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, apart from yourself, who was number one? Well, you know what? I, I'm going to go, I got to go back with uh, uh, Joe Lewis, which I hung out with Joe Lewis also in Las Vegas. I thought he was good. I thought for his size and the quickness that he had, you know, he didn't take the best shot because he would get hit and he'd go down on you, you know but he'd get up and beat you up. So I got a, Joe Lewis was my man. And another guy is not getting the, getting the credit, didn't never get the credit with Sonny Liston, because mm. he was big and strong. And I mean, the styles are very different though. Yeah, but he didn't care about the style because he, he'd well, walk you down uh, like a robot. Uh, bang, bang, bang. One, <laughs> two. <you know? laughs> That's the way he was. He would, he would kill, he didn't care. But you know, all the guys, Ryan Lyles were good, because they're all big, big guys. Buster Masters was good. Big, strong guys, you know, but Ali had that thing with the movement that they could not adjust to. Talk us through the, the post-Ali fight, and, and you said when you came out, you know, the, the lady was saying, I hate you, you know, you beat up our hero, et cetera. Tell, tell me about the time after that and how the, the press treated you and the public. Well, the well. press was, they didn't treat me no different no, no, than they'd been treating me, which was not real good. But Ali has always treated me real good. I went to his room, matter of fact, after the fight, and we sat down and we talked. And uh, I was told, I said, man, you know, he was in there, they were rubbing his arms, legs, his back, his shoulders, rubbing you know, the soreness on him. I didn't know I did that much to him. And he had bruises on his eyes and stuff like that. Then I said, man, you're a great man. I said, I love you, man. He said, look, that means, well, if you love me, why you kick my ass? Then. <laughs> 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 and, and, you know, and I had to laugh, you know, because he was that kind of a guy. He mm. was, you know, and, and then it, before I left, you know what he said? I'll be back. I want home. <laughs> give me homes. I want a rematch. I want home. <laughs> oh, give me room. And he was like, they was like grabbing him, you know, because he was trying to like get to me. Mm. And I just left all the way out the door. And Were you happy or sad? No, I was sad, but happy. I was sad because I did it, man, because I knew I was going to do it, man, but I was happy because I got a check. Your biggest payday today, wasn't it? No, Jerry Cooney. Oh, that was your biggest one? Mm. Oh, he was, I, I could fight a Jerry Cooney every day. But, but, but that, <laughs> that, was no, no, but that was, well, was after, but up to that yeah, point of boxing all the $10 million with your... Jerry Cooney? <laughs> man, they didn't, I didn't know Monday made money that like that, you know? <laughs> $10 million? Dollars. We're coming to Cooney. I want to go back to Ali, though. <laughs> what about now with Ali and the years that have gone on since? And you, you always said that you were very close. And I have not seen Ali in two years. Uh, and the reason why, because he, he moves around and they take him to different spots, and I don't want to see him that way. He's really bad. He know me, but he can't get it out. He can't say it. He can't walk. He's got a hole in. And I don't want to see him like that. And everything that you really want to do in life, you, you got to pay a price, and don't got to pay the price. Okay, talking about yourself, tell me about that style of yours, that, that snake fish jab of yours. Wow. Where did it come wow. from? <laughs> on, let's, yeah, let's have a show look. me this. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Well, you know, don't ring no bell, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> stand up, stand up. Show me this jab because you 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 you've, you've slung it a couple of times. It's pretty fast. He's a big boy. See, I don't like to fight big <laughs> guys like that. <laughs> He's bigger than all of them. Show, show me the jab. What? what, no, what? You see what the main You've taken your ring off. What are yeah, you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna slap. I'm gonna slap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap. Well, you're taking your watch off. No, because I, it's too big. It, 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 it go up and down my arm. But just hold that hand up. See, I'm, I'm gonna show you the whole thing. The, what fighters do today, they do like this. That's okay, right? Mm -hmm. But if a fighter would do like this, loosen it up, 
It don't hurt, do it. That's, that's, that's fine. That's, but it frustrates you. Don't get scared. How quick is that? <laughs> I'm old. Today. 65 used to drop in shots 64. like that. 64. 64. I just turned on November the 3rd. I turned 64. You're making me old already. <laughs> <laughs> just because they had grandkids old as you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Good yeah. shot, good shoot. Yeah. So you still work out a little bit in the gym, don't you? No. Clearly. You do, you can't be throwing a jab like that doing that. No, I... You work out and you're still not as quick. I work out, but... <laughs> I work out in the gym. I work out at home. But what I do, I don't... I run. And I exercise. I don't hit the bags no more. Give me the background to the job. What, 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 where's the philosophy for you? Where's slap. it come from? Slap. You don't punch with a jab. You slap him with a jab. Did you see? You didn't feel that. Mm -hmm. You felt it, but you didn't feel it. Because he's still going to let somebody out. Why yeah. would you do that? It's because it's not closed tight. If I tighten up, it won't be as quick. So I keep it loose, and I hit you from loose, and when I come out, I turn here, and I catch you with the knuckle part. That's the part that hurt. And after you make them drunk, then you mug them real tight. Wow, wow. So, so, so the slap is a range finder. Yeah. Then the mugger is when you close it up tight. That's why I go wow, 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 wow. Any way you want to get throw it, you know? Bang, yank. Just, just relax. Did, did, you, did you develop that from Ali? Yeah, did no. you, did you, did you... Ali don't do it like. I was faster than Ali. So who did it before you? Nobody. It's mine. I ain't letting nobody have it, but they're going to steal it anyway. But let me just tell you something. Ali, they say how quick he was. I used to try to find out who was the quickest. I'm going to try to knock his jab down with this hand. Bam. If I hit him with this hand, bam, I'm quicker than him. I did, pow, pow. I done it all day long. That made me quicker than Ali. Or when he jabs, jab with him, pow. If my jab lands first, I'm quicker than him. Uh, after the fight with Ali, you, you, you talked about your biggest payday. Cooney. Talk me through the fight. Jerry Cooney and I were good friends after the fight. Talk me through the fight. Oh, through the fight? Well, you know, it was, the whole thing is, I, I, I told this to Jerry, and I told him to the press. Jerry is a good fighter, but, you know, the way you beat Jerry is to make him drunk, and then you mug him. I want to beat him up with a jab. Bam, bam. I'm not going to stand there and take no punches and see how hard he hit or whatever. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to box him side to side, side to side, and then I'm going to set him up. And I'm going to sneak a right hand or two in there and back off him because he punches good. You dropped your guard a little bit. You got hit at one my, point. I dropped my guard and in the he third hit, round. He? Oh, yeah. I, but I dropped my guard in the third round, and he went in. I, bam! I hit him with a right hand, and he went down. And he crawled around the ring, and then he got up, and then I went at him. And I seen how strong he were yet, so I backed off. And the bell rang, so I did that again. I did it for about four or five more rounds and kept hitting him in different spots. Bang, 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 bang. He couldn't catch me. And all the punches he was throwing, I wasn't there. I was moving. And I'd catch him with the right hand, catch him with the left foot, and move out. I didn't stay there to wait for him to see what he had to do to me or had for me, and I moved out. And the more I did that, the more I hit him, he was aggravated, getting tired. And the trainers was telling him, I know they was telling him because I watched it on the tape later, that... I ain't excuse my language. He ain't got nothing, you can knock him out. And Jerry said, oh no, he was losing the confidence. He was, Jerry was saying, oh no, this guy can fight. He had to say that. Can you understand the frustration of the public? Because when you're boxing people, you're peppering them, you're mugging them, you know, through a fight. That's a slow burning that, well, process. No, wait a minute. That frustration for the public, they ain't taking no punches. <laughs> <laughs> How they gonna get mad at you? Know, I don't care what they be thinking out there. about yourself. Okay. <laughs> Thinking about Larry Holmes out there. I'm trying to set this man up so I can take this guy out of there so I don't have to worry about him anymore. Because as long as he's standing on his two feet, as long as he got those two hands out there and, and they telling him to kill me, he, that's what he's going to be trying to do. So that's what I worry about. I didn't see nobody. I didn't see my wife, my kids, or nobody out there. You know, I, I was focused on one thing, Jerry Cooney hitting me. A couple times he hit me in the wrong spot, and I said, damn, Jerry, why you hit me like that? <laughs> Because it hit me low by 90 times, you know? Because, but that was a, a plot to slow me down. But I wasn't slowing down. I stayed on the outside, box, box, box. And when I got in, in close, I hit him with a few punches, and I got out of there. Jerry Cooney was strong. I, you know what I tell people? They don't want to hear it. But I tell them anyway. 
Jerry Cooney would have been the heavyweight champion of the world if it wasn't for me. He beat all them guys if it wasn't for me. I stopped his whole future in boxing. Larry, let's get back to your long, unbeaten stretch and obviously the Rocky Marciano mm -hmm. record. I've got a great quote here from you. <laughs> if I wanted to break the record, 49 straight wins, I could go over to England and break it in a week. What is that supposed to mean? What are you trying to say about <laughs> British fighters? Remember saying that one? No, somebody made that up. I would never say that. I would never, I would never say that. You know, that what, as I come over here, and it, I, when, when I was over here before, when I was coming over here, the guys are much smaller. Now these guys are, y'all must have found collard greens and cornbread or something. Because they are big old boys out there, boy. You, ne you nearly made it to 49 right. and 0, but you didn't. How much did that hurt? Didn't. Not at all? Thank you. That's what I said. I said it to my wife, I said it to my friends, and whoever would listen, whoever didn't listen, I didn't care. There was no more pressure. You knew what you were saying by, uh, in regards to Rocky Marciano's record. Marciano, you were saying this guy couldn't carry my jockstrap. You know, and they, everybody got offended. How, how many times do you say that? I always say the right thing. You, you say the right <laughs> thing. No, but you play football, basketball, and all that stuff. I'm, all you people in here probably got played. And say, oh, you could carry my basketball. You couldn't carry my baseball bat. You can't carry my glove. And you got a guy in the back. Oh, you couldn't carry my jock strap. It ain't nothing to it. The, it's a statement. Right. No, you know. They, they were flipping to you, but the press would make a massive thing out of it. Yeah. Larry right. Holmes again. Open this big mouth. I got a big mouth. Well, Larry Merchant uh, <laughs> on Holmes says, uh, Larry has a dexterity to put both feet in his mouth. Uh, that's what Larry, Larry used to say about you, uh, because of the things you said. I always did. I always put my foot in my mouth. I don't, no matter what I did, I don't, no matter how good I've done it, or what I've done, I always put my foot in my mouth. When they don't like you, you can't do nothing right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that I can do to, to show them that, you know, I was me and here with them, and you can't take the, his time and put it in my time. Like, everybody wants to know who the greatest, who was the greatest. I don't know. I know I am. I ain't taking nothing away from nobody because I say I'm, I'm the greatest. If they say Maritana was the greatest, so what? They can say it. They say Ali was the greatest, so what? But I'm the greatest, too. Well, in my mind, I'm the greatest, right? You ain't never had but one fight, and you the greatest. Hmm. You ain't going to let nobody tell you you're different, are you? I'm beating in 40. And wait a minute. I ain't, okay. I'm talking this. You don't care if you are smaller than him. You ain't going to let him kick your butt. No. <laughs> you the greatest. No way. You the greatest, right? He couldn't. He, aren't you the greatest? And he wouldn't. Aren't you the greatest? Come on now. My kids are the greatest. Well, that's next. I'm talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> you the greatest. Everybody got to feel good about themselves. There was an activity January 9, uh, 1918. You boxed Mike Tyson in Atlantic mm -hmm. City. Why? Why come back? I have a funny feeling I know the answer to this, but why come back to fight Mike Tyson? I, you know, it's my wife's fault. <laughs> because, no, it's not my wife's fault. Because me and my wife, me and my wife was home. And we were just relaxing, we were watching TV and stuff like that. And came knocking on the door. And she looked at me and I looked at her. Because we didn't see him come up the driveway because we got cameras. And then I thought I'd go check it out. It was Don King. Uh, 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 uh. Don, what the heck are you doing here? He said, I come down to get you to fight. Don, I've been quit. I quit two years ago. I, I, I can't fight. I'm singing with my band. I'm running all over the damn country. I can't fight nobody. You're crazy. Come on in, Don. We went on in and sat on the couch. Uh, 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 I said, Don. By the way, who you want me to fight? He's a bike type. Oh, shit, yeah, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fight Mike Tyson. I've been off two years. That man, he, you know, he's killing everybody, and I ain't ready for it. I can, it take me a long time to get ready. How long did you have to get ready? I had, three, I had like three months of a regular to get ready if I had to do it, but um, they changed it on me. But anyway, I did, but before I got there, let me just finish this story. And he said, you fight Mike Tyson. I said, no, I can't fight Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson beat me up, man. He knocked me out. He said, well, I'm going to give you three and a half million. I said, where's Mike Tyson? <laughs> 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 and then they gave me the date in June. We were talking about 
we were in November. Okay. And we were talking about in June sometime. And then after I signed the contract and he gave me $300,000 cash, cash. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away. Yeah. And I signed the contract. <laughs> And then he called me up a couple of weeks later and said, we got to move the date back closer because Mike got the other things he want to do. He want oh. to get rid of you quick. You know what I mean? I said, no, man, I can't fight now. I only got a couple of months to get ready. He said, no, we want you to fight January 22nd. I never forget it. January 22nd. They moved it that, that. Yeah. And we was talking about it in November. So I had to get in shape. I had to stop drinking and everything else. How out of shape were you? Huh? How out of shape were you? How out of shape I was. You've gym fit, you're just well, average fit or walking the street, drinking never, and eating I, burgers yeah, fit. I was always in the gym, but I wasn't gym fit. I mean, I was getting hit. When I went back in the gym and started training, the guys was hitting me with punches that would never hit me with them. And I just dealt with it. And then I thought, well, I could get Mike Tyson because he's a four-round fighter. Four or five rounds. If I can last that long, I can get him, set him up and whatnot. And uh, I misjudged him. He hit me with a right hand upside my head, same spot Ernie did. And I went down. And I got up. I said, oh, move around, stay away from him a little bit. And I hold him and tie him up and set him up and get him in. And again, I went against the rope, bang, hit me again. And I went down. I thought, damn, what I got to do this? I'm going to get in the corner again. I'm going to hit him with that uppercut. Because he's coming in like this. I thought, I'm going to set him up. And he did just what I thought he was going to do. He came in there, weaving the bobbin like this, and I put my arm back there, throw, throw the uppercut, and it got caught in the rope. <laughs> it got caught in the rope, man. My arm got caught in the rope. I, I had him. I had him, man. I hit I'm gone. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, Lord, and the right hand came. Bam, bam. And I went down like this, and the referee jumped over top of me like this, and I said... Can I get up now? <laughs> <laughs> so you did, You went into that fight with you. Yeah. You, you thought there was a way to win. You I, didn't go in there I, thinking. I knew I, I had him, man. I had him, man. In my arm. But you know, I, then I looked at the guy that wasn't will, willing for me to do that because I got caught. But I had him. I knew I'd gonna get him. Larry, at the time, everyone was so scared of Tyson. The, the intimidation. Never. That never got to no. you. No. Too little. He was only five ten and a half. I'm 6'3", man. I hold him out like this. I wasn't in shape. If I was in shape, man, you've been saying in the new. In the new. Could Tyson have survived and even thrived in that earlier era of the greats? <laughs> I know you were going to say that. No. I, I, I ain't knocking Mike Tyson. No. Joe Frazier. Frazier, Joe Frazier would beat him up in his own style. Joe Frazier would double. Joe liked guys like that. Ali, slap him all day long with the jab. Kenny Norton, too strong. I mean, you know. Kenny George Foreman. Two seconds. Too hit too hard. Anybody come at George Foreman, you got to box George like Ali did, like I would do. You can't stay there with George Foreman and take no punches. George will tear your head off. I mean, he bang, bang, whop, whop. It's like the kitchen sink he's hitting you with. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> man, I, listen, I see George do some things, man. He would hurt you, he'd ruin you. Big guy, but he couldn't, he had no speed. So you weren't surprised that Tyson's time at the top was, was short? People were describing him like a, like a shooting star, I brilliant, him, but gone quickly. I told him. I said this to people before I even fought Mike Tyson. I said, you know, everybody raised him about Mike Tyson, but he's got something wrong with him. I said, before a year or so is out, he'd be dead or in jail. I said this. I said, because he's not living right. He's not doing the right thing. He's thinking he's all this. And guess what? Before that year is out, he was in jail. And because he thought he was better than everybody, he, he had the freedom to do what he want, and he didn't. Wouldn't you and George Foreman have been the biggest Ooh, money been spinner? One. Of all at that time. Uh, we was offered ten million dollars a piece at one point, but the money could have went higher than that. That was just a guarantee. Why didn't it happen? It, you got to ask George. We should call him up and put him on the phone. Where's my phone? I call him up. <laughs> <laughs> I, t I tell George, George, man, you know, don't worry about. It. You know, George and I are friends. He's a nice. He's a nice guy. You know, he's a. And you know, I swear a lot. He just said, Larry, why you curse so much? 
I said, George, I remember when you used to do the same thing. <laughs> but, you know. Why do you and, think the fight did that? Why do, you why do you think he didn't want to fight you? Would you want to fight Larry Hondo at, at his best prime with jail? Wow! Yeah! Wow! Are you hungry? Wow! Wow! Did you eat yet? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so you boxed up. Oh, that was, you know, because, listen. <laughs> I hate to brag like this, brag, but you brag. know what, man? I, I, I was a bad man. <laughs> I was a bad man. I could fight, man. You know what I mean? I, I'm not lying. I mean, come on, these guys out here today, they don't fight. They, they, you know, they don't go through what I did. Let's talk about the modern era. Is, is there anybody out there now in, in today's boxing world? I swear to God, I heavyweights like, now. I, 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 I only listen. This kid do well. Joshua. Joshua, Joshua do well. I mean, maybe, maybe him. And he's young enough. I mean, I like to take him under my wings right now, and, and 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 teach him how to fight. One of the things about fighting all the time, I don't want to make anybody mad at me. You ain't got time to learn. You just can't fight and learn. You got to practice. So is your advice to someone like Anthony Joshua to, to slow down a little bit, to get experience in sparring in different gyms around the world, that sort of thing? Yeah, the truth is that the matter, he needs to hang around with me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really seen any heavyweights out there with the potential that he has. What about our Lennox Lewis? Lennox finished, he quit. He don't want to fight no more. No, but when he, when he was boxing, did oh, he, he, was okay. you he was think okay. He was, he was okay, he was strong. Brilliant yeah. job. He didn't, he didn't have no jab. He comes to my jab and then one of the yeah, yeah. little pause. I mean, he was all right, but you know, he was one to ten. It was like a four. <laughs> How <laughs> closely do you do you follow the sport now? You know, the likes of Floyd only, Mayweather. Only, and... That's the only one that I follow basically because, and oh yeah, uh, a couple other ones that uh, I would fight uh, Pacquiao and you know, I follow. You know, but I, they don't really interest me. The story. Uh, with Mayweather interests me more than his fight. Why? Because he's crazy. He's crazy rich. If I can make, make $45 million out of one day, I'll be the nicest guy in the world, Jack. I would sell all my cars and horses and dogs and everything else. I wouldn't own none of that. So you, you like what you're seeing with Floyd Mayweather, how he carries himself out of the ring and in the ring. Do you, uh, do you get that? Uh, you know, you, know, you go in the ring. Listen, when you go in the ring, I started that. I started the music and all that. That came in with me. Larry Holmes brought that era in there. Where there ain't no stopping us now with Big McFadden and Whitehead back in 1978 <laughs> when I fought Ken Norton on June 9th. David Hay copies that, one, uh, that track I mean, now. You got to keep reading on, but Larry Holmes going crazy a little bit. But no, I can, you know, you're not, you know what I mean? I started that music thing. They didn't do that. They didn't, when they jump rope, they never had music jumping rope. What'd they do? They jump rope with music now, you know? They never shot a box with music, now they shot a box with music. I don't get none of that credit, but I did it. I, I started all that stuff because it relaxes your mind. It puts you in a different mood. And when you coming out of the ring, coming and going into the ring to fight, when that song ain't no stopping us now, it ain't no stopping you. You're going in there with a theory, you know, with a feeling. You're going in there with courage. It ain't gonna stop you. It's something, it's something giving, it's giving it to you with these records. You don't get a record just for the beat and sound. I hope, or oh, you can get any record. You got to have a record that means something to you while you're going in there. And that's why I went in there with me fat and white hair. Ain't no stopping now, because when I started, you ain't going to stop me. Floyd Mayweather started as pretty boy. He's mm -hmm. now money. There's filthy rich. There's the, the dollars not, flying everywhere. Right, will he keep it, do you think? No. Do you think it'll all go? Yeah, it'll go. Money don't got no friends. Money will go with you and be with him in the morning, and him and her and Yana and... Might even get to my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> money don't have no friends because, you know, people got money. What they do, they, they, their eyes see things that they want they don't really need. Like Mayweather and like Larry Holmes. Even. I had five Rolls Royces. I had 27 cars. I had a bus for all my friends. A 49 seat bus for my friends to go to Lang City and get them and hang out, party. Did I need that? No. I had a house in Florida. A house in New York, I'm a house in Pennsylvania. A boat in Florida, a boat over there. Did I need it? No. I had a damn boat Baja going 100 miles an hour down the middle of the ocean. I told my wife, come check this out. Come on, we're getting the boat. 
and I take her down the river, 80, 90 miles an hour, and I invade this bunch of, no, <laughs> get rid of it. So I got rid of it, you know what I mean? You do things like that. Money you comes money. and go. Your wife, who you talk very, very wonderfully about, obviously mm -hmm. has been a real influence on you. Yeah, she's been great. She's great. She let me do what I want to do. And then she hollers at me. And she's still you know, there. And she hollers. Yeah, she, 33 years we've been how, married. How many kids you got? I got two with my wife, Larry Jr. and, and Kenny, and three others. Mm -hmm. Would you encourage your boys to box? Uh, no, Larry, my son Larry, tried to box. And I said, no way, get hit upside your head. You don't want to buy good education. He quit school after he got his, math, with his bachelor's degree, and I wanted him to get his master, but he, other things on his mind. But, you know, at least he got farther than I did. I only went to seventh grade, and I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> boxing taught you a lot, though, didn't it? Yeah, Discipline. I, if it wasn't for boxing. Self-control. If it wasn't for it, I don't know where I'd be. I mean, boxing, seriously, I drive, I like to have fun when I talk and stuff like that, but a lot of things that I'd be cracking on, I'd be serious about. Uh, boxing, it's made me. It changed my whole world around. You know, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for boxing. You know, I wouldn't have been able to afford it. I never thought I would have been, been on the airplane. And look here, here I am, you know. A beautiful family, you know, we travel, we're not begging for anything. And um, boxing, if it weren't for boxing, I don't know what I'd have done with a seventh grade education. But one thing about that, I got a PhD in common sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of smart. <laughs> Before we get some questions from the audience, because there will be okay. some, Larry. Your record, 75 fights, 69 victories, only six defeats. You reigned as the, the world heavyweight champion mm. for so, so long. How would you like people to remember you? I'm just a regular guy. I'm, I'm, I'm just me, I, you know, my wife's been married, we've been married 33 years and we have fun and I think I'm, I've been pretty good, you know. I mean, mo most athletes ain't married 33 minutes, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and I've been married 33 years, you know, so, so we, you know, I'm okay. I, I, I just want people to remember that I've done what I had to do and I've done it fair. And when I tell somebody, give somebody advice, it's real. It ain't, no, it ain't no junk, it ain't me trying to blow your mind up. I tell you the jab, a right hand, or whatever level, that's what I mean, I, how you do it. I, I ain't gonna tell you what I think I know, I'm gonna tell you what I know. Got Good. some questions from the audience. Okay. So uh, you don't know what the questions are, so you're gonna- Yes, I do. Answer. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna answer them on the hop. Uh, this, is, this is from Barney. Hi, Barney. Barney, how you doing, mate? How are you? If you had to take one more punch right now, off either Mike Tyson in his prime or Muhammad Ali in his prime, which one would you take? Well, I think I'd rather get hit by Muhammad Ali for two reasons. He don't hit as hard, and he'll do it with class. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not shavers, yeah? Ernie Shavers is a nice guy. I mean, but no, I don't want to get hit by shavers because you get hit by Ernie Shavers. You might not remember you got hit. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Cheers, man. Next, next question from Rachel. Rachel. Rachel's on the front. That doesn't look like Rachel at the back. <laughs> Hi, Larry. No, I don't believe in women fighting. I know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. Um, I grew up when you were a champion. I loved your career. Thank you so much for that. Um, if you could pick out one performance where you were at your absolute peak, could you tell, tell us what fight that would be? Well, you know, I, I, it's one fight that I can tell you, uh, and I wasn't at my peak because my, pulled my muscle in my left arm and uh, I didn't know if I was going to do it or not. And that's when I did win the heavyweight championship of the world with Kenny Norton, June 9th, 1978. It's my favorite too. Yeah, that's, that was a good fight. Thanks, Chad. Good cool. question. Uh, we've, we've got Tony next. Where's Tony? Where is he? Tony. <laughs> Even though. Um, where would you rank yourself among the greatest ever heavyweights? Tony, are you serious? <laughs> I know where I'd rank you. Are you serious? <laughs> I've seen the girl say that on TV. That's why I wanted to say it. Are you serious? Number one, man. Why should I put myself behind anybody when I did just as much work as they did? <laughs> number one. I told you to say that. <laughs> where do you rank him? Yeah, number one. He's got yeah, there. <laughs> there you go. Next question from Lou on the back wall there. 
Hi, Larry. How you doing? Lou, how are you? I'm good. Luke. Luke. <laughs> oh. Luke. You got, you got any? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you got any, Luke? <laughs> Um, you talked about the heavyweights of now not being up to the standard of when you were around. Do you think the introduction of a cruiserweight division has sort of tempered the level of heavyweights now? Well, I hope don't cruiserweight hurry up and become heavyweights because I tell you, boxing is lacking now of heavyweights. And uh, a bunch of the fighters out there, I don't really know. So we're looking for somebody that's going to bring a lot of recognition to the boxing and the heavyweight division because if without the heavyweight division, you don't have boxing. Right now, you got one person doing it, carrying it. You can talk about Pacquiao, but Pacquiao is not carrying it. Mayweather is carrying the boxing game along because of his mouth, his money thing, and all that. And he do fights. Uh, boxing needs help. And right now, the uh, only one I see is doing it is Mayweather. Thanks a lot. Well, one final question. How have you enjoyed this today? I love y'all people, and I love y'all style. But your pay is so cheap, you won't see me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Larry Holmes.